Yo, what's up guys, it's the Anime Titan here, back at it again with the What If Deku Had an Evil Shadow Dragon quirk. I'm sorry guys, I've really been losing my brain on this one, like I don't even have, I don't have much to go, so I think I'm going to be dropping it in another two more episodes, that's plus minus where I'm going to end it off. Because basically there will be no overall arc, seeing as Deku already saved Eri, which means there is no quirk racing bullet. Also... Um, like, yeah, that's basically it. Like, the League of Villains would still be rampaging, but there's really nothing other than them. So anyway, let's get back into it. Last time we left off with Izuku and Toga sharing a passionate kiss. And I do apologize to you, but I'm not at liberty to already demonetize my channel with only my first series. I'm not going into 18. For all of you that actually were hoping. I'm sorry, I'm not. Um, actually wanted to say that thing my subscriber count has increased quite a bit not massively but it has increased and i do thank you guys for actually subscribing even if it is just friends or family i don't care i it's not even the subscribers that i care about i'm just doing this for the heck of it so anyway let's get back into it izuku would have enjoyed being around toga and he would have decided that he would not be going back outside instead he'd be spending some time with toga for today he would have <clears throat> just went and sat down next to Toga and they would have just talked, talked and talked for half the day away, as this is when Eru would come busting into the room, well, they would have, well, yeah, they would have talked half the day away, going from at least like 12 to, I'm gonna say two, yeah, two hours of talking, as this is when Eru would have bust into the room saying, Izuku, as Izuku's face would immediately whoop to the door, as he sees a little bit of a scared Eri. As this is when he asks, what's going on, Eri? As Eri would say, Dobby doesn't want to play with me. As Izuku would, Izuku's sweat would just drop at Eri's antics. But he would have told Eri that she can go play with Akuma. As Akuma would have actually been extremely bored. Just sitting there listening to Deku and Ko Toga's conversations. As he would have been actually quite happy just to leave Izuku. And go with Eri. So Eri would be playing with um uh Akuma and they would enjoy it. As Akuma would as I said before, basically be Eri's bodyguard. Her protector. Anyway, um Izuku would have decided that he would leave he would have just made a five story instead of a eleven well ten story apartment building. Just five stories with three rooms. Well, well, six rooms. Five times three is fifteen. Is 30, uh, basically, just thirty rooms, which is actually pretty decent. Seeing as they could actually accomplish that quite a bit easier. So they would have done that for the next week. Just finishing up the apartment complex. Hang on, guys. Yeah, that would have been much more manageable. So they would have done that for the next week to come. And they would have... Basically finished it. Having people have windows installed, the rooms decorated and everything within the next two. So that would be a month. This is when about the forest training arc would come up. Seeing as Aizawa and them would have seen massive improvements from Shoto as well as Bakugo. They would have been over at Deku's place the entire time. Training with mostly Akuma and Darby. As well as sometimes, occasionally, Izuku or Twice. Bakugo would have learned to maneuver much better with explosions, as well as increasing the output, seeing as he actually needed to put in massive amounts of damage to actually injure Akuma, Deku's um, shadow dragon now, as Shoto's ice would have improved quite ferociously, as he would have had to make it much colder, much stronger to withstand Darby's blue cremation flames, as well as his fire would have gotten much hotter, seeing as he... Dabi made sure that Shoto never didn't just rely on his fire, well, his ice side. So anyway, yeah, that would have happened. So when the forest training arc would come around, the you well, Yue would actually have asked Izuku if he wouldn't mind just super going with the kids to supervise, seeing as within three uh about a month and a half's time span, he's managed to increase Bakugo and Shoto's training output and their strength exponentially. Izuku, knowing that he needs to do his part to help, actually would agree. 
So, also, um, the bar would have been done in this time. So, they do have the bar up and running. People are going there. And, um, the apartment complex, it is done. Still busy being furnished, renovated. All the electrical appliances are in. Everything is good. Just needs all the things. And please do note, the apartment complex is not to the public. It's just for Izuku and them. So that they have their own places. So, um, yeah, anyway, let's jump back in. So, Izuku and them would have been just fine with going. So, Toga would have been a little happier, seeing as she didn't have to be stuck in the warehouse the entire time. Darby would have been fine, but he would still be annoyed, seeing as he's constantly the one that has to shift between the bar and the training camp. Because, well, as we know, Darby is owner of the bar. Although Izuku is the owner-owner, Darby's the one who's the face. And the people don't really mind. They, they're they not even thinking of Izuku and them as villains anymore. More just like protectors. Heroes outside the law. But anyway, yeah, that would have continued. So, the training arc would come around. And this time, there would be no Darby, Toga, or Twice to join the League of Villains. So, yes, no forest fire. But Spinner and the rest of them would still have been there, like Muscular, Moonfish, Spinner, and the, um, the gas weirdo. You know, the... <laughs> the man that runs around with his... With, with gas, a gas quirk, a poison quirk, basically. So that would be about that. And in this canon, Koda would have actually... Instead of punching Izuku in the balls, like he would have in canon... He would have watched TV on the day that Izuku had invaded the sports festival. He would be sympathetic to Izuku, knowing that there's somebody else that has endured his pain. Even worse, actually. So, Koda would have actually befriended Izuku. And Izuku would have made Koda, yet again, also like one of his... One of the people that he would try protecting. This would have made Koda and Eri almost like siblings. As... Izuku would have got well the night of the attack. Izuku would have gone with Koda to the mountain. Yeah, sorry guys, sorry guys, phone fell. Um, I'll try to cut that out. I might not. I do apologize, but anyway, yeah. Um, Izuku had gone to the mountain along with Koda as well as Eri, cause well, Eri doesn't want to leave Izuku. Hang on, guys. So I so, anyway, yeah, um, he's cool to have gone with Koda to this spot, as well as Eri, as Muscular would appear. But, before Muscular could do anything, Akuma would have popped out, smacking Muscular off the cliff. Having Muscular basically almost commit suicide, because, <laughs> yeah, well, it was his death wish just showing up. Izuku would have known, at the first sight of Muscular, that there would have been trouble right there and then. So, he would have had Akuma... Take Eri and Koda just to get them back to Mandalay, as well as protect both of them. As Deku would have jumped off the cliff, but here, forming, instead of Akuma just protecting him, he would have learned to manipulate his shadows in a much different way. Dragging the shadows from the night towards him, he would create wings that allows him to fly. Well, not fly, just glide temporarily. So anyway, um, Izuku would be gliding down into the forest. When he drop kicks Moonfish, <laughs> causing Moonfish to lose a bunch of teeth, as Moonfish would have been essentially knocked out at this, as Izuku would have told Shoto, "Freezes, hang on, guys." Oh yeah, uh, so Shoto would have ended up freezing Moonfish, but this is when out of nowhere, Izuku would hear a massive just commotion going off. Okay, uh, forgot to say, Mr. Compress is still there. So, like, yeah. And Magni. But anyway, so, um, yeah, that would have happened as Izuku would have been running there to see Dark Shadow. But this is when something would have shifted dramatically. Izuku would not have needed to go to Shoto or Bakugo to create light. He would have just controlled Dark Shadow, seeing as Dark Shadow is Shadow. He would have shrunk Dark Shadow down and... Tokiyami would have regained control. He would have been tired, but he would have had control again. Shoji would be extremely thankful for this and would actually just be happy about it. So basically, Tokiyami would 
be out of the picture. He'd be tired. And Joji would still be a little injured. But this is when, out of nowhere, well, Awful One wouldn't actually be after um, Bakugo in this timeline, seeing as he never had his fit or his outbreak. But instead, he'd be after Tokuyami. So, Mr. Kompes would be targeting Tokuyami heavily, as he'd actually get him. But this is when, out of nowhere, Shadow Trendle would snap at um, Mr. Compress, yanking him back down. And this would cause Mr. Compress to actually be really injured. But he'd still be able to make his way to Kurogiri. But Deku being able to control shadows would then warp Kurogiri, turning him from a shadowy mist to nothing. Well, not nothing. He would have moved uh, Kurogiri somewhere else. This making Mr. Compressed a lot more tired. In this timeline, Awful One also wouldn't have gotten his um, hands on Ragdoll. Ragdoll. Ah. And basically, everybody is safe. Spinner would have been taken down by Mandalay. And the, mist, uh, the poison guy would have been taken down the exact same way. As Moonfish would be KO'd and Muscular would be near dead. But... This is also when All for, One, All for One would appear, as he'd be ready to fight. But Deku would immediately warp warp somebody unexpected there. This is when out of nowhere, All Might would appear and it, Izuku would warp all the students back to, well, where he was. As well as Koda, Mandalay, Ragdoll, um, what was her name? Ah, what was her name? Come on, guy. Ko uh, it's Koda, Eri, Mandalay, Ragdoll, Tiger, and then... As this is when All Might would appear, as Awful would be completely and utterly shocked, Izuku would have taken a bit of time to actually just puff out All Might's injury, which means he still wouldn't have half his lung, but the injury wouldn't be a massive scar. It would just be small lines that's left from the thing, not instead of this massive gaping almost hole. In All Might's chest, which means it wouldn't hinder him in fights, but he would still need to buff down. Izuku would have had everybody with him, and I did come up on the name, it was Pixie Bob. Like, dear lord, it took me a while to think of Pixie Bob. But anyway, everybody would be there, as Akuma would, ma would grow in massive size, as he would quickly wrap himself around the students, as well as the rest of the people, creating like a makeshift barrier, folding his wing over them. This is when All Might and Orphan would actually begin their brawl, with All Might actually gaining the upper hand, seeing as he didn't have to worry about his injury getting hit. It wasn't even an injury anymore, it was just a bit of a scar. As he would go all out and he would use his United States of Smash, finishing Orphan One, but as Orphan One would try to relinquish his, his quirk, Akuma's one wing would extend out grabbing the quirk itself and then just in well trapping it and ensnaring it in a bunch of shadows Awful one would have been extremely mad at this seeing as his one and only thing sorry guys his one and only the quirk that made him the all powerful would have just been binded by a bunch of shadows and this is when everything would just go to to hell for all for one and he'd be extremely, extremely annoyed. But he would still be sent to Tardos prison. And there would be no more Shigaraki the successor. Shigaraki would still try to rally the remaining um, villains from All For One's group. But they wouldn't listen to him. They wouldn't have the same drive. Shigaraki was just not good enough. So they'd all disband and actually try to join Izuku. As this is actually where I'm going to be ending this, guys. This is the end of What If Deku Had an Evil Shadow Dragon Quirk. This is the Anime Titan, signing out. Peace! Peace.